Thanks so much for uh, coming this uh, afternoon. Um, and um, I know how busy everyone is, and I really appreciate your time. It is a true honor to be here again as the 14th uh, Dean and second CEO of Johns Hopkins Medicine. I, I was commenting before the last time I was in this room, I think was when uh, I was named, and I am only slightly uh, less nervous today than I was at that time. So uh, you'll uh, forgive me. So I began uh, here July 1, and I can just tell you, I'm gonna have to move my side, that I've been, that people ask me what I am impressed with. So it, it starts with the people of Johns Hopkins Medicine. Uh, the people here I find to be uh, just of an outstanding uh, caliber at all levels, staff, nurses, uh, physicians, <coughs> Uh, and students and learners. It's really an exceptional place with, with truly gifted, gifted people here. And so for me, it is a true honor to be here. I'd like to talk a little bit about all our missions now. I'll talk first about our educational mission and its status. This is a great picture, by the way. So first of all, our first year medical student class. We had 5,800 applicants. Um, to this year's class, we had 119 new students, 51 women and 68 men. So I'm gonna just take a second to think about those numbers because if as many of us would have thought, we would have thought of a 50-50 female to male class, which historically it's been. Since um, for the past four years, if you look at applicants to American medical schools, uh, the 50-50 applicant pool is no longer present. Presently, it's only about 43% of applicants to medical schools are women. And that's versus the the, about six years before that where it was 50-50. And if you look at the numbers, I just saw them today, uh, female applicants are flat over the past four years, male applicants have greatly grown. We could all think of why that might be true, it's, it, but it is what it is. So we had one um, student who was returning, so we have 121st year students. 27 of them come from minority uh, groups underrepresented in medicine. The average MCAT scores, and many of us with kids in college look at this and, and shake our heads. So the average MCAT score this year was 11.7 per section, and the av average GPA was 3.82. The students come from nine countries, 28 states, 61 undergraduates. Some of the stories are amazing. I just uh, want to read a couple of them. We have an Army veteran who served in Afghanistan. We have a student who sailed 25,000 nautical miles as a master sailor. We have a student who fled his home country because of war, and two of his siblings died due to the lack of medical attention. And we also have a student who lost both his parents and is raising his young sister here in Baltimore. So they are a really amazing, remarkable group of young people. One of the things we think about in education is the New Genes to Society curriculum. Uh, this was, um, as you know, this year in 2013, we will graduate the first class that went through the entire Genes to Society curriculum. One of the things that we want to look at as we change the curriculum are board scores. And what you can see here, I don't know if you can see it, but this is board scores that have not dramatically changed, maybe a tiny bit up, but I would think really one considers that they haven't changed with the new curriculum. And the new curriculum is doing wonderful, wonderful things for our um, educational system. I think the people who are uh, going to graduate there will have a fundamental uh, understanding of genes, molecules, cells, and organs, and uh, that will go from the patient and uh, to the community, family, and society. It's a really innovative community uh, uh, curriculum that we're very proud of, and the students are doing really well, and they love it, which is uh, great, too. Just uh, other things with our numbers, so I thought people would like to see. Right now, for our medical residents, we have, this shows 2007 to 2012. We have a slight increase in the medical residents during this time period. Our fellows remain the same. Look at the growth in graduate students over this time. And what's remarkable and the biggest growth has been the growth in postdoctoral fellows from 2007 to 2012, or over a 10% uh, increase in that time period. One of the other things that is truly remarkable here is how we outreach uh, beyond just the borders of Johns Hopkins in our continuing medical education group. 
We have 200,000 registrants for that. Uh, we were accredited with commendation as a program. 11% more people in uh, 2011 from 2012. Externally, we get $14 million in grants to help support this program. We outreach to 135 countries. So a really remarkable extension of our learning out to the community. Hopkins not only innovates in science, but it innovates in education. I just want to highlight one of our innovations beyond the Genes to Society curriculum, which is the Aliki Initiative at the Bayview campus. This initiative began in 2007, uh, and it's a curriculum in patient-centered care for the internal medicine residents and medical students there, run by uh, Drs. Wren and Ziegelstein. Um, it really emphasizes the treatment of the individual patient. And the goal is to have physicians and physicians in training develop a deeper understanding of their patients' living situations and their social support systems so they can better treat their patients. It's a, uh, I know Dave Hellman was involved in that, and it truly is a remarkable program. As I said, something else we're beginning this year is a uh, residency at uh, All Children's Hospital. This will begin in 2014, recruiting our first class to provide a residence with training in both pediatric and pediatric subspecialty care at Old Children's Hospital in Florida. One of the other innovative things that we're doing is in uh, Malaysia. So for those of you who don't know, uh, in 2010, we signed an agreement to help create Malaysia's first four-year graduate program in medicine. Uh, in addition to the uh, medical school, uh, the uh, agreement is to build a 600-bed hospital and a research institute. Um, this is on a 130-acre campus uh, in, outside the capital city of Malaysia. Charlie Wiener is there as the dean. They uh, recruited their first class of 25 students in 2011. Remember, those students are undergoing the Genes to Society curriculum. Our same curriculum is being given in Malaysia, it's um, going very well. The students are doing re very well up by an objective standard, our, our exams. Um, I know Dave Nichols has since left, but really Dave was fundamental in starting this, and um, it's going to be wonderful. And just to tell you, that isn't what the um, hospital or med school are going to look like. That is uh, just down, downtown uh, Kuala Lumpur. 